In this video we're going to learn how to create our own custom template filters in Django. Now if you've used Django templates in the past you're probably familiar with these template filters. If you look on the right hand side here we have examples of some of them in this built-in filter reference. For example the date filter. That's used to format a date inside your template so you can use that to format dates coming back in the context. And some other examples include the time filter here and that's used to format time for example in hours and minutes. And we have other useful ones such as the JSON script template filter which is used to safely output Python objects as JSON. And there's many more of these built-in template filters. They all do useful things but we can actually create our own custom ones too to consolidate some kind of logic. And we're going to take a look at an example in this video and I'm going to take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of what we're going to do. So we have here a table data element and that's got some Tailwind CSS classes but then there are a bunch of conditional statements here to add particular classes depending on a student's grade. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do away with all of that boilerplate, all of those conditional statements and extract that logic to a reusable template filter. So after we do that, we can simply render the table data element like this. Here's the example of the custom filter that we're going to build in this video. And I'm also going to do a follow up video where we create a custom filter to render Markdown. So let's get started with building this. If you want to support the channel, check out this coffee page that we have below the video. And thanks very much to everyone that's contributed to that. And I'm also going to add this content to this Django Primers playlist full of different tips for Django applications, which I'll leave a link to below the video. So let's dive in and we're going to take a look at this example that we've got here. So I'm going to close the index2.html. We're going to build this up later in the video. And here we have this template. And what I want to do is start the Django development server and have a look at this page. So I've started the server at the bottom. Let's go to localhost 8000 and take a look at index.html. And here we have the page just now. It contains the student's name alongside their grade on the right hand side. And notice that there's some color coding for the grade depending on what the grade is. So for example, if they achieved an A, the background color is a greenish type color. Now I'm not claiming that this is the best designed page ever, but we're gonna use this example in the video. And here we have these if statements to determine the background color and the text color. So for example, if the student's grade is A, we give it a background of green 100 and the text of green 800. For that to work, you need to make sure that you have Tailwind CSS installed in your project. And we have different colors for when the student's grade is B or when it's C or D and when it's F. So the question is, how do we extract this logic to a custom template filter? What we're gonna do is go to the Django documentation that we were on at the start of the video and we're gonna learn how to create custom template filters. So what we can do is extend the Django template engine by defining custom tags and filters using Python and then make them available to our templates. And we do that with the load tag. And you've probably seen that, for example, with the static files application in Django. So I'm gonna to go to an example of that. Here in this template, we load the static template tags and then we can use that, for example, here in the source for this image. So the static files app in Django comes with its own template tags. And whenever we want to use them, we load them into the template. We're gonna see how to do that with our own custom template tags in this video. Now, if we go back to this page here, in order to define your own tags, what happens here is you create a template tags directory inside one of the Django apps in your project. And within that directory, you can include Python files and don't forget the dunder init.py as well. So let's do that just now. We're gonna go back to VS Code and we have a core application here. We can create a new folder and that has to be called template tags. So now we have a template tags folder and we can create that dunder init.py. And then we can create Python files to define our own custom tags. Now, if we look at this code here, basically this is defining some CSS classes based on the student's grade. So it's contingent on the grade and the conditional statements are used to change the CSS classes, as you can see here. So inside the template tags directory, what I'm going to do is create a new file here and we're going to call this cssfilters.py. Now you can call that anything you want, but you can try and give it a name that's somewhat descriptive of what the filter or filters are going to do. And if we go back to the documentation, let's scroll down a little bit further to see how we can actually define these filters. Now to be a valid tag library, as it says here, the module has to contain a module level variable named register, that is a template.library instance. Now you don't need to know too much about this, but you do need to just copy this code and we're gonna paste that into cssfilters.py. So we now have a variable here called register and we've instantiated the template.library object. This is a class where you register template tags and filters. So we want to use that to register a template filter. 
And if we go back to the documentation again, let's scroll further down here on this section on writing custom template filters. And there's a link to this page below the video, by the way. Now, custom filters, they are just Python functions that take one or two arguments. And there's an example down here below, this filter that is defined here where we have this statement. The filter name is foo and it's passed the variable called var, as well as the argument of bar. So let's scroll down a little bit further here on registering our own custom filters. What we can do is use the register.filter decorator. So for example, this cut filter here takes in a value and it also takes in an argument and it then replaces all instances of the argument from the value using the value.replace method. So it's essentially cutting this argument out of the value string. And in our case, we don't need to provide an argument and we're going to see that in a second. So in that case, you can just define a function with a single argument, which is the value. And here we have a filter called lower and all it does is return the value in lower case. So let's go back to our file here and we're going to map over some of this logic here into the file. So to declare a filter, we use that decorator register.filter and then we're going to define a function here called grade class that takes in the value from the template. Now I'm going to define a dictionary in here and it's going to be called grade class map and it's going to map a particular grade to some classes here. So for example, if you get a grade of A, you get the background green 100 and text green 800 classes. We can then take the value that's been passed in and let's define a variable called user grade. So we're going to make sure that value is a string and then we're going to call dot upper to that value. And that's because we're about to perform some matching between this value here and the keys in this dictionary. So for example, if we have a lowercase a, we want to map that to an uppercase a so that it matches the key in the dictionary. And finally, we're going to return a value from our template filter. And that's what's actually going to be put into the template when we use this. So we're going to take the dictionary, which is called grade class map, and we're going to call the dictionaries.get method. And we can pass that user grade that we've extracted in there. So if user grade is A, it's going to look up the dictionary. It's going to find this and give us back the value that we have here. And we can also provide a default with the dictionary.get method. So I'm going to paste a default in here of background grey 100 and text grey 800. And that should match what we have in the else block in the template conditional statements. So we now have this filter here. And what I'm going to do is use that filter in index2.html. So let's start by copying all of this code over to index2.html. And once we've done that, we can go to the top of the file and we're going to use the load tag here and we're going to load our custom filters in the CSS filters module. So Django knows to look at this template tags directory and it's going to find CSS filters and it's going to load those into this particular template. Now I want to highlight one thing from the documentation and that's that the development server is not going to automatically restart after you add the template tags module. So you will need to restart your server before you can use the tags or filters in your templates. So you'll probably need to do that. So I'm going to, going to do that just now. So we're rerunning the Django development server. And what we're going to do now is we're going to greatly simplify this logic here. So I'm going to cut out all of these conditional statements. Let's remove those. And all we need to do now is use our custom template filter and pass in the student's grade. Now, if you're wondering where the data comes from, we have a student here. And above that, we have a for loop and we're iterating over those students that are passed into the context in this index view here. And we've hard coded a list of students. As you can see, each one of them has a name and a grade. So we can access that data here. For example, student.name, that's going to expand using the syntax into the actual name of the student. And we can do the same for the student's grade. So what we're gonna do here is define the Django syntax for a dynamic variable. And we're going to reference the student's grade here, so student.grade. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to use our custom filter. Now if we go back to cssfilters.py, the name of this function is grade class. So we're going to copy that and we're going to use that here. And let's tab over the actual grade within this table data element. Now before we go and test this out, what I'm going to do is go back to views.py and we're going to change up the template that we're returning from the index view because we now have index2.html where we've consolidated that logic and we're using our own custom template filter. So let's change this to index2.html. And I just wanted to do that so we can show the side by side at the end of the video. And we can go back to our template now. And when we refresh this page, you can see we still have the same look and feel, the same logic is being applied to the background color and the text color. So why is this implementation better here? Well, it's greatly simplified our template. And the code in the original template, it's quite messy to look at in this template and it can be easy to make a mistake here. And more importantly, when you consolidate things like this into its own template filter, this becomes reusable. 
So you might have multiple parts of your website where you need to actually show some grades. That is now reusable. You can use the same template filter if you want to have that same background logic for the classes and the text color. And it's very simple to do this in Django. So let's finish with a very quick overview of that and bring back the sidebar. All we need to do is define a template tags directory inside one of the Django apps in our project. And we can define app specific template filters and template tags inside of that directory. And then we simply load those filters into whatever templates need to use them. And then we can use those as you can see here. And this is not only going to work with template filters, but you can also define custom template tags as well. And that can include inclusion tags. If you're interested in a video on that, let me know in the comments. And I'm going to do a quick follow up to this video very soon. And I'm going to define a custom markdown filter that we can use in our templates. And again, that's something you might want to do a lot. If you have a site that's rendering a lot of markdown, it might be useful to create a reusable template filter in that case. So thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, check out the coffee page if you want to support the channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.